Hello, my name is Murad Larbi. In this tutorial, I will show you how to program the double integration by using uh, Simpson's one third rule. Let's see the tutorial layout. We will start with the revision of uh, Simpson's rule, theory, programming, and we'll so solve an example in order to see the method of solution in case of one or single integration. Then we'll see the double integration as theory and algorithm, and we'll program uh, or make a MATLAB Octave program in order to solve an uh, example. So let's start with the Simpsons one third rule. Here we uh, see that the uh, area under the curve is our uh, goal in uh, making or performing integration. Uh, in the numerical integration, the uh, basic idea for all the methods of integration is to divide the area to uh, divisions, uh, mostly with constant step size in order to simplify the uh, formulation uh, of the integration formula for any method. So generally we take constant step size or constant width for each strip and then we define uh, the integration point at each division so here we saw for example the integration point is x sub o which is equal to a where a is the uh, lower limit of integration and we start uh, from this point uh, to the positive direction of uh, x uh, coordinates so we have x1 then x2 and uh, up to xn which is the last uh, point or let's say the end of the domain of integration or uh, the upper limit of integration which is uh, designated here as b so now uh, mostly the the integration methods calculate individual areas for each strip and then make a summation to uh, have the total uh, areas of all divisions which represents the uh, approximated value of the whole area under the curve of the function f of x. Now uh, for uh, Simpson's one-third rule uh, actually its uh, technique depends on taking the area or computing the area uh, of two adjacent or two uh, successive uh, strips. So that means uh, the formula of, or each uh, step in the calculation includes two uh, strips together. So here, for example, for the first two uh, strips, uh, here we start with one third of h, which is, uh, this is called uh, averaging because we will take the average of uh, the f of x in this uh, context. So f of x sub zero, that means we compute the value of f of x at the uh, uh, integration point x sub zero. Then we compute the uh, value of the function here, which is called f of x uh, sub one at integration point x sub one. And we compute f at uh, x uh, sub 2. Uh, so uh, now when we compute the weighted average, we not notice that we multiply the uh, function or the value of the function uh, corresponding to the uh, integration point x1 by 4. This is a weighing factor. The aim is to give more weight to the middle point which approximately represents the uh, somehow uh, the average height of the uh, other uh, uh, function uh, values at uh, x sub o and x sub 2. 
So for this reason, uh, Simpson's one-third rule is considered one of the most uh, accurate uh, methods uh, with respect to the number of divisions uh, when we compare it with the other uh, methods of numerical integration. Now, let's see how can we apply this uh, formula in the calculation of the whole area under the curve. Now, we notice here in this formula that we uh, sum or add uh, every two strips until we get to, to the last strip here and the whole, system, the whole equation will include the whole area under the curve. So one third h of multiplied by the uh, values in, in the bracket. This is for the first two strips. This is for the second two strips and so forth until we get to the last two strips here. Uh, we should notice that here, uh, for example, we have f of x sub o. Here we have f of, sub, uh, of x sub n, which is the last line ending or closing line of the area. And uh, then we notice that there are some repeated uh, terms. For example, f of x2 here is repeated again as f of x2 as the beginning of the next two uh, strips. f of x4 will be repeated and so on. Here, for example, f of x n sub n minus uh, f of x uh, sub n minus two is repeated here again. So when we uh, take one third h as a factor outside the brackets, uh, as a common factor, and we uh, combine the similar uh, terms, we'll get the following equation. This is an expanded form of the Simpson's one-third rule. We have one-third h multiplied by the whole terms uh, of the uh, Simpson's one-third uh, integration. So here we shall notice, we should notice uh, three things. First, the factors multiplied by f of x sub o or zero and the factor of f of x sub n are 1. So here we have 1 here, we have 1 here. So that means we only have these two terms which are multiplied by the factor which is equal to 1. Then we, the second thing we should notice that the, uh, the values of the function correspondent to x uh, having uh, odd subscripts. For example, x sub 1 f sub uh, x sub 3, x sub 5, until we get, for example, here, x sub n minus 1. We should notice that n should be even number, because we are, we are going each two, every two uh, strips, so it's normally n should be an even number. That means x sub n minus 1, or n minus 1, is an odd Number. That means that all uh, x, all values of the function which uh, correspond to x's having odd subscripts should be multiplied by 4. In another way, which is the third thing which we, we should not notice here, that the uh, values of the functions correspond to x having uh, even subscripts are multiplied by 2. So in this way, we have this formula. Now, there's two methods to uh, create a computer, uh, fun computer function or a program uh, from this formula. One is by using the expanded form directly, as we will do in this tutorial, or by uh, more combine, by, by make more com combining uh, process in order to uh, combine or group, let's say, the uh, functions or values of the functions multiplied by similar uh, multipliers or factors. For example, here we grouped the f of x sub 0 and f of x sub n 
because they are multiplied by one and also we group the whole uh, values of the function having x sub uh, odd numbers because all of them are multiplied by four and here we grouped all uh, f of x uh, sub uh, even numbers and multiplied them by two this will yield a general form which based uh, not on the uh, let's say a selection or a condition uh, as we see in the expanded case no but by using grouping method and calculating the sum of each group and then finally we will take the grand total of these uh, sums uh, so this is this uh, mainly uh, I think common uh, algorithm in the uh, textbooks of numerical analysis but uh, anyhow for double integration we should uh, know how to program the expanded form of the uh, Simpson's one-third uh, rule so let's see how to do that by solving uh, this uh, example so we have uh, integration limited integration or uh, from 0 to pi over 2 uh, x sine x dx now let's go to the uh, editor and start uh, typing our program and we'll see the result in the window of or the command window uh, uh, in the lower left on the lower right of the screen sorry now here we start simply by defining the function so f will equals at here we define an uh, anonymous function the anonymous function generally is very simple and flexible in use uh, in MATLAB octave so we'll use this let me uh, enlarge the okay in order to have okay sine x then we define the limits of the integration so we say a equals to zero the lower limit uh, b equals to pi over 2 uh, here we can use pi directly we, because uh, pi is a, a predefined uh, constant in netlab and octave now we can define the number of divisions so the number should be an even number let's say uh, for example uh, uh, 18 you can select any number anyhow uh, generally uh, the larger the number the more accurate the more accurate uh, solution we can get but uh, generally sometimes even small numbers like uh, 18 10 uh, 16 could uh, yield a good uh, solution uh, especially with uh, Simpson's one-third rule now we compute H the step size between uh, the so the edge is simply can be computed uh, as the uh, width of the domain the whole domain so b minus a over uh, at, uh, so over n sorry in this case we can get uh, equal uh, step size between the whole uh, integration points now define the summation variable uh, and we initialize it with zero because always the uh, summation uh, variable should be initialized uh, so we uh, will not depend on the default value of s no we all defined it uh, because uh, some codes especially uh, like MATLAB and Octave do not accept to say to have an undefined value and the uh, right side of an equation as we'll see uh, later now for this is the subscript this I I represent the subscript of X's so X uh, the subscript st starts from 0 to n uh, I think it will be helpful to show you the previous window uh, especially this equation 
so uh, it will be very helpful to see it uh, while uh, we are coding now let's uh, put the condition so we say if uh, i equals to zero which is the first value here the first point which uh, it has factor one or uh, i equals to uh, n which also it has factor uh, one so or be careful not use to use and if you use and uh, i equals to zero and i uh, equals to n that means that both should be uh, uh, i will should have two values in a sing in the same time and this is impossible so we always use the logical operator or uh, not and so we say i equals to n then uh, p let's call the factor as p uh, uh, i used it for simplicity only one now else if uh, mode i two mode is uh, the modulo or that means it returns the uh, remainder of the division in integer division the integer division of i by 2 so that means if uh, the if i is uh, an even number so it should return 0 because they should not be a remainder by from uh, the division of uh, an even number by 2 but if it is an odd number that means we can say that if mod i over 2 is not equal to 0 so that means the number is odd then p should equal to 4 finally uh, else we don't have uh, another choice so uh, we say that p will equal to 2 if the uh, previous two conditions uh, are not uh, satisfied so here we end the block of the condition now let's compute x so x equals 2 now here although we are going uh, by subscripts but it's in in, in order to uh, program it uh, it's uh, uh, we cannot use uh, subscripted variables or arrays because here uh, it will take a, a large amount of memory uh, without a significant uh, benefit so it's better to use uh, incremental method what's the incremental method that means we can say or we mean we uh, we start adding the step sizes uh, to a in this way for example we say i multiplied by h for example uh, it could be added also by, by means of the loop but anyhow this is very uh, uh, practical this means that starting from a from the lower limit of integration at each step add h so for example let me explain it graphically from this now you see here this is point a so instead of saying uh, we have or creating an array of uh, x's no we can say that x equals to a so at x sub zero when i is equal to zero now at x sub one x will be equal a plus h plus because i here is one so one multiplied by h will be h so here the, the value will be a plus h similarly here we have i2 so the value of x here will be a plus 2h and so forth so this is the idea at the last point here it will be a plus uh, i equals to n so it will be uh, a plus n h which will uh, give this point exactly so that's why we can use the uh, method now 
That's write the line of summation. As I said here, the summation will begin with a value at the right side. So if we didn't define the s equals to zero, uh, we will uh, get an error message because there is a value, undefined value, at the right-hand side of an equation. And this is uh, not uh, acceptable with the most uh, compilers or interpreters of computer languages. Now, let's say p, which is the factor, multiplied by f of x. This actually uh, will compute all values inside the uh, brackets here. So the values in these brackets are com calculated. The final step is to compute i by multiplying one-third h by the value of s. So it will be i equals one, or let's say h, more simpler, oh, simpler, okay, multiplied by s. So this is the uh, computer program of uh, Simpson's one-third rule. Let's try to run the code and see the result exactly. You see at the command window here that the value of integration is 1, which is equal to the analytical uh, solution up to uh, it's exactly, we see, 1 to the uh, 5 digits it's accurate uh, to the five digits uh, or more, maybe, uh, after the decimal point. Now, this is the idea of creating a computer program by using the expanded form of Simpson's one-third rule. Now, let's go to see the double integration idea and how can we uh, code it by this method. Double Integration is performed over two axes of coordinate system to find the vo volume between the generated surface, the surface generated by the function f of x, y. And this is the point, of, important point, that the function is not a function of x only, but it's a function of x and y together. And the uh, geometrical shape generated, which is to be computed by, by with the uh, with the uh, uh, integration is a volume, not an area. So here, let's see this idea graphically. So here, I prepared this uh, graph here in order to see uh, how we can uh, understand the uh, double integration method. First, we should notice that the integration points are not along x-axis only or y-axis only. Integration points are spread over the whole plane under the geometrical shape, or let's say under the surface created by the function f of x, y. So actually, we are not computing an area. We are computing a volume starting from integration points upward along z-axis until we get the value uh, which lays uh, as a point on this sorry okay maybe this is okay so this will show us as a point over the uh, or uh, the surface generated by f of x and y so that's why we should be uh, careful uh, in uh, understanding the meaning of the uh, integration in this case. Analytically, generally, we don't feel this uh, geometrical shape because we create, make uh, what's so-called outer integration and inner integration and uh, perform them analytically as a mathematical procedure. But in numerical uh, integration, it's very important to understand the geometrical uh, concept uh, because uh, it uh, constitutes the basis of the uh, double integration. So here, uh, when we start the integration, every point here we see and in red and blue dots here are the integration point. So the integration points are 
uh, at the points of intersection between the division lines. So we have divisions, you see here, for example, HX, 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 HS along X axis. Also, we have HY, 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 which are the step sizes in the Y direction. And we have division lines at the points of integration at each axis, but the uh, the whole area under the surface, the whole plane, XY plane, contains the uh, integration points, which are the actually the intersection points between the division lines uh, uh, in X and Y uh, directions. So this is the main concept of the uh, integration. Uh, also, we should notice something important that the limits will be AX up to BX and from AY, the Y direction to the BY. So each point when we compute the value F of X for each integration point here, actually we're, in we're getting a point in the plane here, so when we raise a straight line in the z direction, we'll get a point on the surface, which will be the value of f of x corresponding to the integration point which we uh, want to perform the integration at. Finally, when we compute the whole uh, uh, integration point, where we uh, all integration points are computed, and multiplied by the factors, we perform the summation, and as we did with the uh, two-dimensional uh, integration, here the th three-dimensional integration, or let's say a double integration, will be performed by multiplying uh, in the uh, required factors. Let's go and see uh, how can we apply the Newton, uh, sorry, uh, the Simpsons one th third rule uh, to according to this concept. Now we see here the expanded form of the um, Simpsons one third rule. Uh, here we should notice that each f here is a function in f and y. But uh, of course, uh, the problem here will be we cannot put the subscripts of x and y equal because it's it's a matter of uh, distribution over an area so for example when take the subscript uh, 1 for x uh, accordingly will be uh, y1 y2 y3 y4 y5, up to uh, yn uh, also if we met for example we take uh, y5 uh, for example so for R5, there will be corresponding uh, x0, x2, x1, x2, x3, up to xn. So actually, uh, it's very difficult to uh, create an equation uh, in the uh, equation form that can express the uh, idea. But graphically, we can do it uh, in a simpler way. So here, let's see this grid. Uh, this represents the method of computation of the factors which are multiplied uh, by the value of the function at each integration point in order to perform the Simpson uh, double integration. Now, let's see here, for example, if we have this area starting from a, xa to xb, and in the y direction we have a y a b. This is similar, similar to the to the uh, plane under the surface. Exactly, it is similar to the plane under the surface. So now here we will start from point first point at a x and a y, which has the factor one. And along the x axis we will fi have factors one four two four two four one. This comes from here, 1, 4, 2, 4, 2, so forth, up to uh, f of n, which uh, has factor 1. Also, in the y direction, also we have 1, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 1. So, in the same way, we have the factors uh, which are taken 
from uh, this expanded form now this is valid or simply can be uh, seen for the uh, axes x and y or along the lines of x and y but when we go to the second row here for example we see that the numbers uh, are different why because simply when we perform the uh, double integration the factors of each point uh, of each coordinate sorry of each corresponding coordinate should be multiplied for example here in the second row and in the second column so here we see 16 why because the factor of the second term of the integration for x here is 4 also we as we 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 are using the same uh, equation for y thus the value for uh, or the factor for uh, the uh, second term in y is 4 so 4 multiplied by 4 will yield the factor 16 for this point of integration let's choose an arbitrary for example let's me take this point as you see for this point here for x we see that the factor is 4 because 1 4 2 4 so we'll run 1 4 2 4 so it is in the fourth term for x also we'll go here we'll see it is in the fifth term for y so the fifth term is 1 4 2 4 2 ah that means this is the fifth term in the uh, formula so that means when when multiply 2 by 4 it will result in 8 that means we can we must multiply all the uh, factors uh, in this way in order to ex find the exact uh, factors of each term in the double integration furthermore we should notice something else one third edge also can be included by distributing the value one third edge over all the terms here but generally because it's a constant value we keep it out of the brackets or uh, the uh, inner terms or that's that's why we have one third here but the same idea all one over three uh, uh, edge values can be or actually mathematically are multiplied uh, in the whole uh, values and we should notice here that uh, the one-third edge of the y because we notice here that we have h x h x h x and we have h y h y h y that means the h x uh, does not necessarily uh, equal to uh, h y both can can have different values so here we should notice this point now uh, this will yield to uh, that all factors should be multiplied at each integration point before coding let's take two important notes here first the number of divisions for each integration can be different but uh, both should satisfy Simpson's one-third rule condition of even number of divisions as I said the number of divisions uh, could be different uh, this results in different hx value and hx hy value so no problem in different widths of uh, the, stri the, the strips or divisions for each direction but the main rule that the number of divisions must be even for each axis second note is the final summation should be multiplied by the common uh, factor of each integration where because as i said uh, actually hx over 3 and h 
uh, y over 3r if we uh, distribute them inside the brackets inside or over all the uh, terms of Simpson's one-third rule actually the the at every point of integration this factor will be multiplied also uh, as well as the uh, integer factors of two and four and so forth so that's why uh, instead of multiplying all of these values inside we can take them uh, at the last uh, step of integration as an overall factor to be multiplied uh, by the uh, summation now let's uh, code this uh, method of double integration by solving this uh, problem so let's go to our editor again actually instead of making some modifications in this code i prefer to uh, start from the scratch because sometimes modifications could be confusing for the students so uh, i i think uh, I, it's better to start from the scratch because the code is not so large uh, and it is interesting actually to uh, make it uh, step by step so uh, let's define the function as we uh, did in the uh, single int integration but here of course the function will be in terms of x and y then we'll say x square multiplied by y plus x multiplied by y square now let's define the limits of integration so we see uh, a this time we say uh, a y equals to minus one and b y equals to one now the question is why i started with y now the most important thing here to determine which integration is outer and which is inner now here we have two integrals dx here actually is called the inner integration and dy here is the outer integration thus when we start the loop the outer loops because here we have two loops so outer loop will be the outer integration and the inner loop will be the uh, uh, inner integration thus uh, since we have in this problem we have y here as outer uh, integration so we should start with uh, y so this is the idea why i uh, started with def defining the values of y now ax from 1 to 2 2 now uh, the number of division we also we have ny let's say for example uh, 16 ny uh, sorry nx equals to let's say 14 or it could be 16 also no problem now let's compute h so h y will equal to the value of by minus ay over ny and hx will be equal to bx minus ax over nx
so let's we have one summation so uh, we don't have to make two summations one summation so we uh, give initial value of the summation and start the loop now the loop starts with for i equals to zero to n y because this is the loop of the outer integral so this is very important to understand this mechanism now, if i is equal to zero what is the same idea if i equals to zero or i is equal to n y so uh, let's p equals to one else I'll if uh, mode i and 2 is not equal to 0, then p should equal to 4, else p equals to Here, we end the conditional if and start the loop of the inner integral. So for j equals to 0 to nx, this is loop of the inner integral. So, if j is equal to 0 or uh, j is equal to nx, then let's call it q now because uh, it should be different, p and q. So, q equals to 1. Uh, else, if mode j by 2 modulo of j by 2 is not equal to 0 then q should equal to 4 others and here q equal to 2 and sorry and now as we did with a single integration let's compute the value of x so x will be a x notice there's nothing different here more than adding another loop of integration so a x plus j should be careful because the uh, loop variable of the inner integral is called j and j corresponds to the axis so that, that means we multiply hx similarly y equals a y plus j uh, sorry i multiplied by hy finally s will be to s plus P multiplied by Q multiplied by F of X and Y and here we end sorry the first loop this is uh, end of inner loop and this is end of the outer loop finally the integral will be equal to uh, h x multiplied by h y all over 9 multiplied by s now let's run 
the code and see if it is correctly. There's something undefined like six. Ah, sorry. Here, I made a mistake. It should be bx now. Run the code. My, okay, let's see what's the, oh, oh my god. I made another mistake here. Mode. Run. So, okay, i equals to 1. So here, we see that the value, because the solution here should be 1, so we obtained the value i equals to 1, exactly, the uh, solution of this uh, problem. So actually, this is the uh, theory and uh, programming method of the double uh, integration. So uh, it is about 29 lines here. Uh, actually, we can combine some lines in order to shorten this uh, uh, code. Let me do something, some quick uh, modification here. For example, we can uh, take these, control X, and we can take this calculation and put it here directly instead of but actually, the first form is more explanatory. That means uh, it's more explaining. Uh, but anyhow, you can select the best thing you see uh, helpful for your work. So we can and let's here print the value of s because now s will be equal to the i let's try exactly one so here we reduced the number of the lines to 27 anyhow this is uh, up to you but the general idea of programming the uh, double integration is by uh, applying the uh, expanded form uh, of substance one third rule if we want to use one th substance because actually you can use the other rules also or other methods also in double integration but uh, this is uh, in our tutorial the use of Simpson's one third rule in the double integration I'm very thankful for your listening uh, if you liked this video please uh, give me a like if uh, you uh, subscribe uh, you can uh, be informed about the coming uh, tutorials uh, if you uh, share this video with your friends i'll be very happy more resources about the uh, matlab and programming uh, numerical methods in matlab can be found in the link under uh, below the uh, the video thank you very much and goodbye